the DIY SPO2 system generally works pretty well, but the SPO2 sensor is rather cheap and is not being used in optimal conditions for SPO2. But for various reasons, which could be the sensor, it could just be the SPO2, how it works in general, or the Arduino, there are times when it may not show accurate results. So in this video, we're gonna try and go through and troubleshoot some of these problems and what you can do to try and get more accurate results. So the first thing to check is the user interface, specifically the LEDs on the Arduino. When the sensor is running normally, you're going to see the onboard LED on the Arduino flash about one time every four seconds. So what can happen is either through software problems or if the wiring gets knocked around a little bit, the Arduino may lose connection with the SPO2 module. And if that happens, you're gonna notice that the LED, the onboard LED does not flash at all. Now the LED could be on or off, but it will not flash anymore. Generally, the best way to fix this is to unplug the power and plug it back in, and it will generally sort itself out and reinitialize the sensor. The user interface will also try and convey errors whenever possible. So for example, if I remove one of the wires from the screen module and reset the device, the Arduino will detect there's been an I squared C bus failure and will flash the onboard LED and the alarm LED about once per second. If I do the same test again and remove only one wire from the SPO2 module, the Arduino will not be able to connect and it will display an error message as well as flash the lights. In these cases, you're gonna to wanna to check the I squared C bus lines, make sure they go to the correct pins and they're fully pushed into the breadboard. Afterwards, you can reset the Arduino by pressing the onboard reset button, or you can just remove and reconnect the power. There may be times when either the SPO2 or the heart rate may not update properly, or it shows values that don't really make any sense. And if you want to diagnose this, or if you're just curious to see what the sensor sees, you can use this SPO2 viewer program. To use this though, you do need to upload a different sketch to the Arduino. In the DIY SPO2 folder, if you open the Max3105 sketch offline, open that up and then upload this sketch to the Arduino. It will allow the SPO2 viewer program to access the SPO2 module. Now the screen and the buttons will not operate when the sketch is applied. So you need to apply the old sketch again if you want to use the OLED screen and the buttons. But for now, we're just going to use this program. So at the drop down menu here at the bottom, click on that and choose the serial device for the Arduino. Click connect and then click start capture. And what you'll see here is the real-time information coming off of the sensor. So I'm going to place my finger over top of the sensor, and after a little bit, you'll start seeing the information from the sensor become more normalized. On the right-hand side, you'll see the R value and R value average. This is used in the SPO2 calculation. There's also the approximate SPO2 percentage, and there is also the heart rate. So one thing you might notice right away is that the sensor is very sensitive to movement. So right now I'm trying not to move as much as I can, but if I start moving even just a little bit, you'll see the graph really go off the rails. So staying as still as you can will really help out the Arduino when it's trying to read these values. If you'd like, you can also pause the capture and go to the menu bar at the top, click export. You can export it as either an image or a comma separated value file, which then you can load into Excel, for example. So using this program can help you diagnose if there's a problem reading from your finger, Maybe if you're moving around or if you need a better position, this might be able to help you figure out what kind of position that would be so that it's able to get a better reading from your finger. Other things can affect the readings though. So for example, if you have cold hands, that will make it harder for the SPO2 sensor to be able to read a signal coming from your finger. On the other hand, sometimes there are just certain people the sensor does not respond well to. I'm not sure why this happens. It's still a work in progress. But hopefully this video gives you some ideas on what you can do to troubleshoot the device. And also if you're just curious to see how it works, you can use this program and get a more in-depth view of its internal workings.